Minimalism versus KonMari. Is it the same or is it different? Hello, I'm Katie. For the last seven plus years, I lived a minimalist lifestyle and I also practiced the KonMari method and became a certified KonMari consultant. So I have some experience in both things, in minimalism and in the KonMari method. So what is minimalism? I would say the goal of minimalism is to simplify your life and only own what is really necessary so you can have no distractions from your material belongings but can focus on other things that are important to you. A little disclaimer, when I talk about minimalism, I mainly speak about what the minimalists are teaching just because this is the content I mostly consumed in my own minimalism journey. So what's the KonMari method? In a nutshell, the KonMari method is about creating a life that sparks joy, meaning only owning the things that spark joy so the things support you in creating the life that sparks joy. So there are definitely similarities in both approaches. However, the KonMari method does not aim for owning as little as possible, unless this is your big goal and you know you're konmari your life to own as little as possible. Now let's look closer. What's the same? Both minimalism and the KonMari method are about living intentionally and mindfulness. The why is essential. What is your goal? And what is the reason why you want to accomplish it? It's also similar that the things that you learn throughout the process will change your future behavior. For example, in the future, you will probably shop in a different way because you learn from all the experiences and created skills along the way. And those were pretty much the similarities. Now let's talk about the differences. The KonMari method is a method made by Marie Kondo and it's only her. And minimalism, it's like a whole philosophy and there's so many different directions and extremes and super minimalist and a little bit more easygoing minimalist. So there's a ton of different things. The KonMari method asks, what does spark joy? And in minimalism, it's more like, if I let this go, does it spark more joy to let this item go and to be free of it? So that's more the approach. Minimalism is mostly about decluttering, about letting go. However, the KonMari method has that part also the decluttering but then it's also about organizing how to organize all the things that are left over in a way that it still also sparks joy then another difference is that in minimalism it's go by location it's like you know wherever you want to start you start with a drawer you start with a closet you end with the KonMari method you don't organize or declutter by location, but by category. You would like start with clothes, then go to books, then to paper, then to miscellaneous, or another word for that is komono, and then at the end sentimental. And in minimalism, it's 30 days um, letting go one thing on day one, and on day two, you let go of two things and so on. It's like more, there are different approaches. There's also a packing party approach. There are many different ways, but it's never, by category, usually it's by location. In minimalism, it's also said, go slow, go as slow as you want to go. I mean, you could also go fast, but with the KonMari method, it's never slow. It's never, oh, I just do here five minutes and I do there five minutes, I do several hours each day. You can move along fast because it's important to get momentum so you feel motivated for the stuff that's getting harder and harder so you can like train your muscle to get better and better at making decisions. I think if I would have to divide um, what's minimalism more about and what the KonMari method is more about, I would say that minimalism is more about simplicity and maybe even sustainability and being very critical with what we own. And the KonMari method, it's more about the emotions, about joy, about gratitude, and also has a very spiritual approach to it. You know, if you let go of an item, you thank the item. And I think this is very spiritual and very beautiful. So I see strengths in both approaches. So this is why for me, both, both approaches are my go-to. It's not like either or, it just can't. It's, it's like, I love about minimalism to think, how can I make my life more simple with less stress, maybe even like spend less money because I live in a smaller apartment and just think more about what I buy, the quality I buy, and what it does to our planet. And for the KonMari method, when I made the emotional decision of letting an item go, 
and then I am appreciative in my heart for the service it gave to me and all the lessons it taught me even if the lesson was like oh I should not buy this in the future because it was not a good thing to buy for the life I actually wanted so I think this is beautiful and to be very intentional about what's going on in my emotions and also in my head so and find like a balance in the two things and that's why I think when I work with my clients I use like both tools from minimalism and from the KonMari method. In my opinion, the KonMari method is always very gentle and very intentional and careful. And sometimes in minimalism, you might be so logical and you make a decision that you regret later. And I did this in the past. I was so logical in decisions and I let something go although it sparked joy and I regretted it later because I just wanted to be done. So I think there are traps in both methods and in both approaches, but I think the strongest is if both things are used together. Or if you want to become a minimalist, then the KonMari method can be a starting point. But if you say like, oh, this is all too emotional for me, I'm just a very logical person, well, no problem. You could still go through the different categories and be very strategic about it. I see minimalism and also the KonMari method like a buffet of many different things. And it's like pick and choose what works best with the season I'm in. And that can be different from season to season. In the end, it's about growth, about healing and feeling happier and more content in our lives. What I can tell you in the end is that letting go of items and deciding to keep other items that spark joy created so much more space in my life. And that space in my outer life also somehow came into my inner life. And I was able to think about totally new topics like a vegan diet or eating just healthier, creating less trash, zero waste, composting like topics I never ever really thought about before and this does not mean that you have to do any of those things I just want to say that changing something in your outside life will have effect for your inner life for yourself how you love yourself how you love our world and how you love others and I think this is very meaningful and if you need like a strategic plan then feel free to download my free declutter list it's very detailed it's of course in the categories of the KonMari method but a minimalist that's more logical can use it and somebody who's very emotional can use it too and you find the link in the description of this video and please let me know in the comments what you love about minimalism what you love about the KonMari method where you feel like hey this is confusing can you explain more about that ask me those questions in the comments and if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel for new videos. Wishing you a wonderful, wonderful day and I see you in the next video.